Hello, my name is Dr. Art Rastenhad, and today I will be discussing what is an MR ultrasound fusion guided biopsy and how can it affect you. Before I begin, I do have some disclosures. I have a non-financial research agreement with Avivo, a division of Philips Healthcare. This is a company who, in collaboration with the National Institutes of Health, helped develop this new technology. Prostate cancer is the most common cancer in men. Approximately 20 million PSAs are done per year. The prostate biopsy as we know today was first established in the 1980s using ultrasound to guide the needle to sample specific areas within the prostate or zones. 1.2 million men annually undergo a biopsy. Only 30 to 40 percent are positive for cancer and the majority are negative. A negative biopsy does not mean you don't have prostate cancer. It just means that the biopsy was negative. You may still harbor some disease. I will describe why and what limitations are associated with the standard 12-core random biopsy, or some colloquially known as the blind biopsy. Did you know that the 12-core biopsy samples less than 1% of the tissue of the prostate looking for cancer? Prostate cancer is the only solid tumor routinely detected by an indirect tissue sampling. What I mean is, if you have an elevated PSA that raises suspicion of prostate cancer, then a biopsy of the gland with no direct action towards any lesions, you just randomly sample the gland in distinct zones that we've created. The only tools that we've had in the past was the PSA and the 12 core biopsy. As seen here, the sensitivity for a PSA greater than 4 is only 20.5% in detecting prostate cancer. And for the 12 core biopsy, the sensitivity is only 39%. Both of these tools are limited. However, this is all we've had till now. Dr. Emerton and colleagues wanted to determine the performance characteristics of the 12 core biopsy using whole mount specimens as the standard. The defined clinically significant disease is Gleason 7 or greater or a volume greater than 0.5 cc's or 1 centimeter in diameter. This is what we're looking for to find patients to better select them for treatment versus no treatment. How did the 12 core biopsy do? Well, it missed approximately 50% of lesions greater than a centimeter in patients, and in patients with 7 millimeters to a 1 centimeter lesion or a 0.2 to 0.5 cc lesion, miss it almost 80% of the time. Historically, prostate cancer consists of three components, the screening, the biopsy, and the diagnosis and treatment. We are currently evaluating the impact of MRI imaging on selecting patients for screening, treatment, and even follow-up after treatment. Patients presenting with an elevated PSA used to only have one option. They would go the standard 12-core transrectal ultrasound or truss biopsy. However, today, with the advent of multiparametric MRI specialized to see within the prostate, new options exist. In the past, people could perform MRI and gantry biopsies, which has not caught on today just because it was time-consuming and took up time of the magnet where you could actually be doing other scans at the time. Others use the information from the MRI to guide their standard biopsy to hopefully select the area. However, it's not readily visualized on ultrasound lesions. And then template mapping biopsies, which is a special grid that's used to sample every five millimeter on the prostate. And then you can select the zones that correspond with what the MRI, was see MRI observed and therefore select those areas for biopsy. I will discuss what a fusion guided biopsy is. This takes the information from the MRI and fuses it in real time with the ultrasound to use that information to steer us to specific areas. This is a multiparametric MRI of the prostate. This patient had three prior negative biopsies and his PSA continued to increase. In the upper left hand corner, the T2, our anatomical sequence, there is an area of low signal as seen with a yellow line going to the crosshairs. And to the right, the DCE, or the Dynamic Contrast Enhanced MRI, showed an area of increased contrast uptake in the same region. And on the bottom, the ADC map, which looks at the area of restriction of tissue or the free motion of water, which is a dark area corresponding with the similar things on the top two squares. This allows us to put this together as multiparametric. And the lower right is just a color map of the ADC to help visualize the area of increased restriction. This is the same patient's MRI. See the yellow circle highlighting the area of suspicion that's outlined by the crosshairs? The patient's biopsy was negative for possibly two reasons. The first, the 12 core biopsy sometimes doesn't penetrate to the level we need to diagnose patients with prostate cancer. Lesions on the top part of the prostate can go missed. 
And number two is that the apex is sometimes an area that's difficult to sample during the standard 12 core biopsy. Again, going back to our historical view of prostate cancer, the screening, the biopsy, and the diagnosis and treatment. Our goal is to incorporate MRI imaging as an intermediary step with patients with an elevated PSA prior to the biopsy. We found that patients with an elevated PSA, 33% have a negative MRI as reported by Dr. Emerton and colleagues. These patients still may harbor some degree of cancer. However, as a screening process, you're able to select out patients that may have no cancer at all. PSA can be increased due to inflammation or other causes that are not associated with cancer. In addition to risk factors associated with prostate cancer such as age, family history, PSA, pathology if the patient's on active surveillance or their race, imaging helps improve risk stratification, patient selection, hopefully aid in decreasing over-treatment of patients, and can be used in patients for post-treatment follow-up. I will now describe the MR ultrasound fusion guided prostate biopsy, GPS for prostate cancer. Fusion biopsies combine the benefits of one imaging modality with another. For example, we use the MRI which has a high sensitivity and specificity for detecting prostate cancer and the ultrasound which is used in urologist's office today to guide the standard biopsy. This will allow us to guide, track, and record biopsies in 3D space. This is an example of a fusion guided biopsy. On the bottom screen was a previously obtained MRI. See the green circle with the red dot? That's a suspicious area that we'd like to biopsy. On the top screen is a real-time ultrasound, and the red outline is the MRI that's been overlaid. Notice how we're able now to place the needle deep into the prostate to be able to biopsy the top of the prostate, which is not normally sampled during the standard 12-core biopsy. We fire the biopsy needle, we record the position. It allows us to correlate this after the fact with the MRI imaging. Typically we take two biopsies from each suspicious lesion. Notice how we still have excellent fusion. The red outline matches up with the ultrasound. We attempt a second biopsy in the sagittal plane. Notice how we've maintained good fusion. The needle will then be placed deep into the prostate again to sample the top part. This is a patient that's had two prior negative prostate biopsies. On final pathology, the patient was found to have intermediate risk prostate cancer, which was undiagnosed on his prior two standard biopsies. See the needle in place? We fire and sample through the target. We record the location again to allow us to go back and review this with the imaging. Dr. Pinto from the National Institutes of Health wanted to determine the impact of MRI ultrasound fusion guided biopsy in patients undergoing active surveillance. All patients that entered Dr. Pinto's trial met the strictest active surveillance criteria. They had low volume, low grade disease as per their 12 core biopsy. Unfortunately, 41% of these patients were actually restaged and no longer active surveillance candidates based on grade or volume. This corresponded with MRI suspicion, as seen here in this chart on the upper right, low, moderate, and high. If you had a high suspicion for prostate cancer on a multiparametric MRI, 60% of them were no longer candidates for active surveillance and should be treated. This reinforces the idea that prostate cancer and screening and image-based approach does have an impact on how we select patients for care. Taking this one step further, what we see on the multiparametric MRI, does this correlate with the Gleason score or risk stratification scores? Using the D'Amico risk stratification for low, intermediate, or high-risk prostate cancer, as seen here in the chart, the blue is low-grade disease. As suspicion goes up, notice the blue decreases. Then looking at high grade disease, notice that the, as the suspicion goes from low to high, the amount of red increases. This correlates with a direct association with higher grade prostate cancer. The MRI ultrasound fusion guided prostate biopsy uses this key information from the MRI to target cancer. There's a three times increase in cancer detection using the fusion biopsy platform compared to the repeating the 12 core biopsy. 
as in published series, if you repeat a 12-core biopsy after a previous negative biopsy, there's only 11% chance you're going to detect cancer. That's almost three times lower than if you use the MRR ultrasound fusion guided biopsy approach. In the end, our goal is to stop these blind biopsies. We colloquially use the name blind referring to the fact that we're not targeting direct spots within the prostate, just the zones that we've set forth to make sure there's even sampling. As reported by Emberton, there's still an inherent sampling bias associated with the standard 12-core approach. Other benefits include patients with active surveillance. It allows us to convert low-volume, low-grade disease, follow these lesions over time to see if anything changes. It also improves risk stratification for prostate cancer using the MRI imaging. And the final step would be using this for focal therapy. It allows targeting, treatment, and follow-up of only the cancer and leaves the normal prostate and nerves untouched. Therefore, decreasing the chances of erectile dysfunction associated with whole gland therapy.